Pursuing happiness oftentimes requires risking happiness. Pursuing happiness oftentimes means risking happiness. Because if you're like, really excited about, about uh, skydiving, I guess, and you're getting pumped up about it, well, you're risking it being a letdown. You know, you're risking the parachute not opening, which, by the way, would still be a hell of a story <laughs> um, for somebody. Being able to recognize him in the moment, rather than in retrospect, you know, I think I was happy back then. Take risks. The thing that you think that is never going to work out for you. What's the worst that happens? Think about a risk you want, something you want to do, but you're afraid of trying it because what if something goes terribly wrong? What's the worst that can happen? I die. What's the worst that can happen to you in life? You can die. And you're going to. You are absolutely going to. There's nothing that you can do about that. We are all, we're all born and we all die. So the things that we do in between those two moments, those, those I think it was in this class, those two dates on the, on the, uh, on the gravestones, your birthday and your death day. You notice how gravestones don't usually tell the story of your life, they just tell the beginning and the end as though that's all that defines you. But it's what you do in those, t in those, in those moments that are not described on your headstone. That's what it is that makes you who you are. I guess everything can become a success if you look out there right away. Like, what's so funny? Everything. If you can look at it the right way. It's always funny for somebody. I and mean, if you can find a way of making even the worst failure funny or interesting or exciting or at least have a story from it, and it wasn't a waste. And so the worst that can happen to you is that you're going to die. That's going to happen anyway. So then I guess the question becomes, what are you afraid of? And it's always that, that idea that we can somehow like grab onto that happiness from the past and then drag it into the future with us. And a lot of it is we, you know, if we were able to, to, to enjoy moments for what they were and understand that sometimes things are, are, are beautiful and great just because they're temporary, because you're never going to get a chance to do them again. Like the first time that you do something is going to be easy, largely is going to be memorable, <clears throat> but you can't drag that first time if, with you into the future, if you're going to make that event memorable. So for example, like the first time you go skydiving, there's a lot going on where there's, you know, the adrenaline's going and you're excited and you don't know what to expect. And then the second time you do know what to expect. Now, you might say, ah, it was a lot more fun the first time. But the first time you were probably overwhelmed by, you know, the, the wind blowing across your face or even just the preparation and the, the, the anxiety of getting ready to, to, to jump and they put you through the class and they tell you, what's going to happen, what to expect, and so there's a lot of anticipation. And then the second time you go, sorry, so therefore you might miss a lot of things. Like you're going to miss the details of the ground, you know, underneath you. You're going to miss some of the details of the things that are, that are going on around you. Like when you're dropping down in the parachute and you don't see birds flying by, you might have missed that the first time because you were so overwhelmed by everything else. You can, you've, your mind only has so much bandwidth, it can't take everything in. Now the second time you can maybe train your mind so that all those other things that, like you know, the, the, the preparation, sitting in the class where they tell you what to expect, now you can kind of go into autopilot on that, but now that you know what to expect, now you can be more alert the second time to, to experience it differently. So you can't go back to the first time, but you can get better at experiencing things as time goes on. The second time you experience it, the, the hundredth time that you experience it, if you're able to appreciate the moment for what it is, ex appreciate the experience, I guess for what it is, then, then you can not duplicate that the first time, but then again, you can't duplicate the fourth time either, or the tenth time, or the hundredth time. And you won't need to, if you can just appreciate each of them as they, as they come and go. Hmm. I think so. Yeah. Which I'm sorry, say is it tomorrow that you were worried about yesterday, but instead of making it worry, make it joyful or happiness. Yeah, like yesterday we were, we were hopeful that something was going to happen. And then today it's happening, and we're experiencing it. And then as soon as we experience it, it's now a memory. In fact, it becomes a memory as we're experiencing it, because every second, of course, goes into the past. It becomes a memory. And so sometimes we can get really sad about that and just think, like, oh, my gosh, like the, the moments of joy, they pass so quickly. You know, like, they, like, the, like, the, like the good times come and they go, and, but you might... At some point, just wish that the good times could last just a little bit longer. 
Yeah? And that's because we're holding on because we, we, don't necessarily have necessarily, we don't necessarily have something else to look forward to in the future. We think we don't. We do. We do. Um, and it, but if you say, I, I have nothing to look forward to, yeah, well, not with that attitude. Of course not. But if there's a, a, something joyful that's, that's making you happy, I mean, stop and process it in the moment. Sometimes, you know, the experiences are beautiful just by virtue of the fact that they're experiences. And by the way, experiences is one of those things that makes you an interesting person. You know, if, if you're able to, to you know, re, re, relate to people, if you're able to tell stories, not just stories, you could, you could be a storyteller, of course, but if, the more that you've experienced in life, the, the, the fuller of a person you are, the more interesting of a person you are. And of course, experience oftentimes is just the name that we give our mistakes. And you can look back on something and just say, man, I shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah, you should have, probably, because at least it was interesting. At least it was, there's, a, there's something exciting. What were you doing otherwise, I guess is what I'm asking. Like, you weren't sure if you should go skydiving. Well, what were you doing otherwise? You know, watching television or sitting on the couch? Not that those can't be enjoyable experiences, but let's assume that you're not afraid of heights. Would you rather jump out of a plane, or would you rather watch television? For the most part, we'd rather, you know, jump out of a plane. And that's something that you can talk to a person about. And by the way, when you do do that, and you find somebody else who, who's done it before or is excited to be doing it, then you have something to relate to them with. The more experiences you have, the more people you can relate to. And the more people you can relate to, the more, the, the better the conversations you have. And, and also, just the deeper and richer the relationships you can have. Like we were talking about last time. When we say, you know, I like talking to people that I can relate to. Well, how do you relate to more people? Have more experiences. Have more experiences. And how do you become more interesting to people? Have more experiences. But more importantly, how do you become more interesting to yourself? Have more experiences. Do more in life. Others. Because happiness isn't just something that we hope for. It is that. It isn't, he's not saying it's not that. In, by the way, having hope for something can make you happy. It gives you something to look forward to. You ever looked forward to something and it made you excited? Like skydiving? Just looking forward to it excites you. And then this is one of the reasons that when, when things don't go the way we, 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 we want them to, we get upset and we get like, oh, I was, over, uh, I was expecting so much more. I was, and it seemed overrated. Yeah, probably. But hopefully you still had a fun experience in the meantime. Um, but yeah, happiness is a hope. It is that also, but it's also a memory. And so it's something, happiness is something that we look forward to, and happiness is also something that we can look back on. And it refers to being a king in exile. And that's a weird thing. Like, how can you possibly be a king in exile? Like, you can be an apostate in exile, or you can be like a political enemy in exile. You piss off the state and they kick you out of the country. And today, by the way, it, it's, I mean, imagine if you got kicked out of your country. It would, it would suck. But if you got kicked out of the United States, where would you go? Europe. Europe. Yeah, why not? There's a lot of places in the world that you could go. Now, if you go back, you know, a uh, thousand years or so, and you get kicked out of your city-state, where do you go? Not to the wilderness. <laughs> no other city-state's going to take you. Because they're going to wonder, why are you kicked out of your city-state? Why are you wandering the desert? Why are you wandering the wilderness? And so being in exile was, was, what, it was, it was social isolation, absolutely. It was being lonely, absolutely. But it was also dangerous. It was life-threatening. Today, it would, it would largely be an inconvenience that we would probably get over. And then maybe afterwards, you might say, well, I'm really glad I got kicked out of my country because now I, I can visit Rome or whatever. You know, something you wouldn't have done otherwise. But to be a king in exile, to be kicked out of the country that you rule... Well, what's the, what's the country that we're being kicked out of here that we become a king in exile? What's the one thing that you actually have command and control over, which is your mind? And so, if, if, we're, if, uh, if, if happiness is something that we look forward to, then the looking forward to is happening up here. And if it's something that we look back towards as a memory, it's also something that's happening here. But the real... The real challenge, I suppose, is to be able to enjoy something in the moment, to be able to stop. Not, I mean, not necessarily stop the experience, but to be able to think like, huh, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. I can't believe I'm skydiving. I can't believe I'm, you know, whitewater rafting. Whatever, whatever it would, you know. And that's different from, 
can't believe I'm watching television again. <laughs> you know, instead it's more like, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is unreal. And those are the, it, being able to, to enjoy it at the time and to be able to almost, in a, in, in a way, the hard thing there is to almost shut off your mind for a second and start to process what's happening and to experience what's happening. Because the more you try to stop an experience and think about it in the moment, the harder it is to experience it because now it's, your mind can't kind of keep up with it. It's now in the past. And then you're missing the little things that happen all along the way, you know, the, the things that, that would otherwise be memorable. And so you have to be willing to, to take the risk for happiness because like pursuing happiness, let me say it, Pursuing happiness oftentimes requires risking happiness. Pursuing happiness oftentimes means risking happiness. Because if you're like, really excited about, about uh, skydiving, I guess, and you're getting pumped up about it, well, you're risking it being a letdown. You know, you're risking the parachute not opening, which, by the way, would still be a hell of a story <laughs> um, for somebody. Um, Whitewater rafting, whatever, whatever, I don't know, whatever it is that would excite you to, to do. You, you know, it means you're risking something. You're risking something. If you're going to be, let's say you're an athlete and you're going into a competition, you're risking losing. You're risking, you know, the, the opportunity. If I, if I win this, I'm going to be extremely happy. Oh, but if I lose this, I'm going to be miserable. That's, there's a risk that goes on there. And so pursuing happiness or at least um, receiving happiness, having it ensue, means that you're risking it as well. So there's a strange kind of dichotomy there. But if you can learn how to, how to enjoy the moments no matter what, like Franco talks about, well then there's almost no risk for happiness. Because even if like something goes, like if you think about like what would be a bad parachuting experience, I mean I guess the worst thing would be that the parachute doesn't open. You know? Yeah, yeah and you die. <laughs> the end. Um, but if the parachute only opens for, let's say you go, you go with somebody, and one parachute opens and one doesn't. Well, there's still a pretty good story for somebody, for all the survivors, you know, the person. Who, um, but being able to, to find something funny or being able to find something enjoyable or memorable in it, then that means that you can find happiness and joy in almost anything. Not just contentment, not just meaning and purpose. Hopefully we can move past meaning and purpose at some point. I mean, meaning and purpose starts to become the... The, the par for the course just to survive this, this life thing. But the, 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 the happiness and joy is the thing that makes the surviving this life thing worthwhile. And so finding those things that, that make you happy and being able to recognize them in the moment rather than in retrospect. You know, I think I was happy back then. Um, it's useless. It's useless because you didn't appreciate it at the time. You know, take risks. The thing that you think that is never going to work out for you. What's the worst that happens? Think about a risk you want, something you want to do, but you're afraid of trying it because what if something goes terribly wrong? What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen to you in skydiving? Die. You die. What's the worst that can happen to you in life? Die. You can die. And you're going to. You are absolutely going to. There's nothing that you can do about that. We are all, we're all born and we all die. So the things that we do in between those two moments, those those. I think it was in this class, those two dates on the, on, the, uh, on the gravestones, your birthday and your death day. You notice how gravestones don't usually tell the story of your life, they just tell the beginning and the end, as though that's all that defines you. But it's what you do in those, t in those, in those moments that are not described on your headstone. That's what it is that makes you who you are. And so everything that happens in there, whether it was, it was a success or a failure, I guess everything can become a success if you look out the right way. Like, what's so funny? Everything, if you can look at it the right way. And it's always funny for somebody. And if you can find a way of making even the worst failure funny or interesting or exciting or at least have a story from it, and it wasn't a waste. And so the worst that can happen to you is that you're going to die. That's going to happen anyway. So then I guess the question becomes, what are you afraid of? Yeah. Clowns. Clowns. Why, why, why afraid? What, what are clowns going to do? Just exist. <laughs> I hate the fact that you exist. Yeah. Are clowns going to kill us? Yes, yeah. you know, yes, it yeah. So what's the worst that can happen to you with a clown? Die. You die. <laughs> you die. Anything else that you want to take a risk for, you're going to die from it? And even if you are going to die from it, I guess you got to die from something, right? Mm. 
So whatever that risk, whatever that thing is you want to try, why not? There's a great song by the Smiths, which is the best band in music history, by the way. If you don't know the Smiths, you should know the Smiths. Uh, they have this great song called, um, called Ask. And the line goes, uh, shyness is nice, but shyness can stop you from doing the things in life that you want to do. And coyness is nice. Coyness is when you pretend to be shy. And coyness can stop you from doing the things in life that you want to do. And the next line is, so if there's something you want to try, ask me, I won't say no, how could I? Well, try something. You find out. I mean, and again, going back to Frankel, that's how you find out what makes you happy. It, it, it ensues. It comes from what you're, what you're presently doing. And then you find out. And sometimes you'll walk away. Parachute didn't open. You got a couple of broken bones. And you might say, hmm, I did not find happiness in that. But man, you've got one hell of a story that you survived that. You know, that's why they put the, uh, the, person who's, you know, the, the person you jump in tandem with, that's why they're on the back, just in case it doesn't open. <laughs> nice little cushy thing to land on. Um, but, and if it does work out, well, then there's something great that happens because it gives you encouragement to try other things in the future as well. And then the more experiences you have, the more interesting you become, the more happiness that ensues, and the fuller your life. So. But it's so hard not to like constantly think about the bad outcomes that come out of it. Yeah. So, how do you overcome that? It's only one way. Try and find out. You might be surprised. Have any of you guys ever been surprised before by something that you've tried and it turned out well? Yeah. You ever tried something that turned out badly? Yeah. yeah. Would you trade those, those uh, if, if you could wipe them both out, would you wipe them both out and just live neutrally? Yeah. Yeah. This is life, man. Peaks and valleys, strikes and gutters, highs and lows. But the highest of highs, they come from the risks that you, that you take, don't they? And then the, lows, the, then the low lows, by the way, they may have failed at the time, but if you look at it the right way, I bet you can probably tell a funny story about it now. I've got some, I've got some funny ones. And you all will too, if you look at it the right way. But I guess the question is going to be, are you going to have great memories of things that you tried? I don't know. Questions, comments, concerns? Like this? Um, I connected this quote to the one from yesterday. <laughs> oh, man. But since they already talked about that one, I connected it to another one by uh, Fyodor uh, Dostoevsky. Yeah. That says, the mystery of human existence lies not in just staying alive, but in finding something to live for. How uh, you were talking about how uh, happiness is like, like a hope. So. Um, finding something to live for that would be having the hope not only having the hope uh, to find happiness but after that time comes um, making that hope into a memory making that happiness into a memory and looking back and keep hoping for more happiness mm -hmm. and by the way that's one of the ways that you, that you can turn that hope into a that hope that turns into a happiness that turns into more happiness as a happy memory because even if it turned out badly, you can still choose to remember it in a funny way. You can look back on it and go, ah, I did that? Like I think about, there's a friend of mine, um, Billy. I think I've talked about him before. Uh, he's a friend of mine, lives up in Los Angeles. He's one of the only people I still talk to from, from high school. And if I brought Billy in here and, uh, and just introduced him to you guys, he would just, he would just say, oh, man, that's so weird, this gallon's a teacher. And he would go, did he ever tell you about the time that he, and he would unload a series of really embarrassing stories about me, because he has a lot of them, because <laughs> he, he's known me my whole life, he has a lot of them. Um, I could choose to remember them like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. But looking back on it now, they're, they're, yeah, they're, there's some funny stuff that's in there. And then I could tell you, and then the, the I guess the sad thing is, is that I've known Billy most of his life. And I could not tell you very many embarrassing stories about him. There's only one I can think of off the top of my head. Only one I can think of off the top of my head. And that was because he didn't, he, he hasn't really lived. When he was growing up, his brother was schizophrenic and uh, would attack his parents. So Billy would never go out with us very much, play baseball with him. He always, had a, he always felt the need to, to stay home to protect his parents in case his brother had an episode. So he didn't experience much of, of what we experienced. So 
he has plenty of embarrassing stories about me, and I don't have any, any really about him. And I'm wondering if that's one of the ways that we, that we judge a successful life. How many embarrassing stories are there about you? I don't know. Others? Okay. Oh. Uh, drills are due today.